Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Love and Light Show, where your special guest is Julie Pierce. And I'm so excited to be talking to you guys about Love Upgrade. We have been so excited to bring this to you. And the universe is now in alignment with all the things we can talk to you about love consciousness, um, soulmate relationships, your heart calling, and get into a beautiful experience at the end so you can get more clarity on your identity and some of the expectations that you have around that. So I'm so excited for today's episode. And I encourage you guys to say hi as you're jumping on or if you're catching the replay. And this is the Love and Light Show where usually every Monday, this is a special episode because I was sick on Monday and the universe wasn't in alignment with that on that day. Um, so usually on Monday at 1 Atlantic, 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific, we go, go live to bring you different light workers and healers and badass spiritual entrepreneurs who are heart-based and doing incredible work in the world. So you guys can get different messages or healing modalities or tips or tricks or tools that will support you on your healing journey so that you guys can get what you need to move forward and be a little bit better version of yourself so that you can be the change you want to see in the world so you can be more loving to yourself, to your friends, to your family, and to the community that you're in so that the whole world can be a better place just by you shining your light and being a little bit better version of yourself. And I'm Laura McPhee. I'm a joyful goddess, a speaker, healer, and a coach. And I love empowering women through self-love, self-care, and sexual empowerment so that they can be living the life of their dreams, so that they can let go of that negative voice in their head that says that they're not good enough or pretty enough or smart enough or whatever enough, that they can fully shine at shine their light in the world how they're meant to be in the world without having that negative voice or negative subconscious beliefs that are holding them back. And one of the ways that I'm super excited to be doing that is this Monday at 8 Atlantic, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. So interesting doing all the time zones, guys. <laughs> We're going to go live in a Zoom call for um, a masterclass about From Broken to Blissful, where I'm going to go a little bit around my story. And I've been teasing a lot of it in some Facebook Lives and in my private Sisterhood Bliss community about my experience where I had been doing personal development and spiritual development and all this stuff for years. And I was at a Tony Robbins event and he's like, no one's broken. And I get I'm like, I totally get that. Don't think anyone's broken. It's limiting subconscious beliefs, all this bullshit. But like, I think my vagina is broken because like, I'm not getting wet enough and I'm not orgasming. And there's all this stuff that's wrong with me. And I was super ashamed in the bedroom and had to like piece together all these different things through healing modalities and like videos here and books there that would help me on my journey. So in this free one hour masterclass, I'm essentially going to go over the framework that I used to get myself from very negative space with not loving myself or being able to receive love or being able to receive pleasure to the other side where I have fucking fantastic sex life and I'm so deeply connected to myself and I'm more confident and life's just more amazing and blissful and awesome. So I'm gonna go over to that framework during the call. I'm also gonna do healing downloads and do some immediate exercises that you guys can walk away with so you guys can get your feet wet on having a better life and journey for yourself. So I'm super excited for that. I'm gonna put the links in the comments after we're done here so that people can register. It's totally free. And then I'm going to be doing a deeper dive into that with select women who want to join a sisterhood for three months who are ready to get their bliss now and love themselves unconditionally and heal from their past so that they can move forward and have more space for a loving, beautiful, awesome relationship in their life. And I'm loving that this is like the perfect time for Julie and I to actually get on because it's around Valentine's Day and we're talking about love and love upgrades and relationships. And Julie is the queen of conscious power coupling. I love that title so much. And she loves helping spiritually inclined um, the spiritually inclined strategically create power couple soulmate relationships. So I love that so much. Thank you so much for joining us, Julie. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here, Laura. Thank you for having me. And you know what, you guys don't miss this masterclass that was just described to you. That's an awesome opportunity. I know it's going to be fantastic. So I want to encourage everybody to take advantage of that. Thank you, Laura, for offering that to all of us. Thank you. You're welcome. And everyone who's popping on live, we have four people on the, right live with us right now. So definitely say hi. We're on the BeLive platform, so we can't see you as you pop in. Your name doesn't just come in. So definitely say hi. Or if you're catching the replay, say hi as well. I love to engage with you guys after the show. And if you feel like a friend needs a love upgrade in their life, definitely feel free to tag them in the comments or share it out so that the people yeah. that need this message can get it. So I'd love totally. for you to explain a little bit about how you got to your current day, Julie, and you're a published author and just all the wonderful things that you're doing. Well, in a nutshell, so let's just keep it brief. Um, mm -hmm. Relationship is everything. 
relationship yes. is everything. Mm -hmm. um, and as you were talking about, the most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. Yes. So over 20 years, I've been um, helping people go through tra transformations, facilitating that in the way of coaching and also in the way of different healing modalities. Um, I do work with energy. I'm very intuitive. And I also um, do like talk work and um, artwork and grief processing, oh, all these fine. different uh, ways of accessing what feels broken, even though we're not broken and discovering our wholeness again. Mm -hmm. much like you, but I do focus also on helping people move into that readiness space for relationship. In other words, um, the love partner relationship, mm -hmm. um, and then also working with them to strategically find and create that relationship that they really, really desire. And in fact, sometimes just allowing yourself to dare to dream mm -hmm. of what that relationship is, is a huge step. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And the love upgrade is kind of the, the beginning space that what I was talking about, the relationship readiness space. Um, Cause we want to make sure that we're ready to enter fully into relationship with another person. And if we're mm -hmm. still in that space of um, not being our own best ally of not loving ourselves and taking care of ourselves first, mm -hmm. we really, are setting ourselves up for a lot of difficulty in that um, partnership relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember when <laughs> I watched something and like a mentor was saying that you can be a hundred percent happy yourself and come to a relationship. And that's still only 50%. Like they have to be a hundred percent happy themselves. You need to be in a space where you're at your full capacity and you're not like desperate and needing them to fill some kind of like hole or peace or part or like the key to your heart or like all those societal like sayings that we have that aren't necessarily healthy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it's not only so important for me to love myself and me to do that work, but for me to also be extremely clear on the partner that I'm going to have and what he'll have to bring to the table and to ensure that when we come together that the relationship, which is kind of a separate identity that we both yeah. create together, is happy and healthy and that's on its own. So I love that. And Holly is saying, oh yeah. <laughs> um, hi Holly. Hi Tracy. Hi Holly. Hi. Hope you guys are having an awesome evening. <laughs> I wanted to add that um, also in the comments to go ahead and if you have any questions that come up as we're having our conversation here, even if we can't get to them right on the live, we're gonna be coming back to the comments thread and we can definitely uh, chat with you ongoing. Yes, definitely. I encourage you guys to engage with us for sure. So how do you help people find their heart's calling and get really deep into that? Well, one of the first things I like to do with people is um, what I call the love frequency reading. And when we do that, we actually look at what is your current love vibe. So there's a love expression scale and we measure that. And then I also like to do an Oracle card reading where we can see where you've been in the past, where you are currently and where your energy, the trajectory of your energy into the future. And as you know, none of us can predict the future, but we can kind of mm -hmm. see what path we're on. And then of course we make decisions and, and the future rolls out as it will. Mm -hmm. But um, so this is one of the ways that I like to start working with people. It really opens up the conversation. It fills in the big picture of kind of where am I, where have I been, what are my, what we get, we start to get a hint of what those patterns are that we've been playing. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the specific uh, things that I like to share with people that I hope all of you can, can go ahead and use right away is this idea of your heart's calling and your soul's response. Mm -hmm. So let's say, um, let's say you go on a date, a first date. This is really useful on a first date <laughs> everywhere. In fact, okay, let's talk about first dates. So let's go on, you go on a first date and you're thinking, wow, this is really cool. This is going well. I think I want to go on a second date. Your heart's like, wow, really excited. This is cool. This is going well. Um, the thing to listen to is what is your soul's response? Your soul is gonna come back with a, yes, this is really exciting, or, oh, wait, that's a red flag, or, 
um, so you may get a yes, a no, or a kind of a yellow, a red, yellow, or a green light, basically, from your soul in response to your heart's calling. So your heart's calling is telling you what your ultimate desire is. Don't be afraid of that. It's actually not there to torture you, although sometimes it feels that way. Because we're like, I really want this thing, and it's never happening for me. Well, mm -hmm. it's not there to torture you. It's, it's there actually to guide you to say, mm -hmm. here's where you're going. And then your soul's response is the, the check-in, the, the thing that keeps you in the rails on the right path, basically. So don't ignore that. Um, if you're not really familiar with tuning in and listening to your soul's response, you can think of it like um, those, little, those little feelings you get, those little messages you get. They may be physical nudges. They may be... Um, emotional nudges like sometimes you might have a gut feeling you've heard of people talk about that or you may have a pain in your neck or you may have um just a poke or something or you may in fact hear wait up excuse me what wait a second you know or you might hear yes 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 you know how they talk about that um if you're a hell yes for this this is for you <laughs> yeah that's what that's like a soul a soul response yeah. and then in the mix we have this our head with all these like logical patterning rationalizations going on right mm -hmm. so i like to call that sort of the friends and family um corral where they're <laughs> where there's all these opinions right and those opinions are formed based on what we've learned about relationships. So that's the, the intellectual, the rational, like I was saying, the, the mental processing of, well, this guy has this job and he's drives this car and his family is this, it, it's such a great it's checking business. things off my list. Off my list <laughs> right? Isn't that good enough? Yeah. No, we don't, we don't need that. That's not what we need. That is mm -hmm. the last thing to do is to check that list. Before we get to the list, let's have let's know what our heart's calling is and let's listen to the soul's response. I love that. And that's so powerful because I feel like mm -hmm. Cosmo and all the things that I used to listen to when I was a teenager trying to figure it out. It's like, have your list, figure out what you need. Does he have a good job? Instead of what is most important, which is your heart's calling. So I love that you lead with that. It's so important. And if you're ever having trouble doing that, even just like shutting your eyes and taking deep breaths into your heart space can get you more into that heart centered space than being in your head. Cause I used to be super guilty of being in my head all the time. And I'd be thinking a million miles an hour and like have all the different possible scenarios instead of just being like, okay, let's take a moment and breathe and tune into my heart and see what's going on there and kind of check in that way. So I love that you have that. Absolutely. And I want to add to that. Um, that that headspace is an is an outside thing right that's outside of you so that's kind of looking looking outside of you for this validation about the potential for this relationship mm -hmm. that's not the place to look for any kind of validation in fact we want to look for our validation inside so yes tuning into your heart space putting your, one hand on your heart and one hand near your solar plexus down so you've got your heart and your um so your your fourth and your fifth or fourth and third chakra going for you where your per personal power is, you wanna tune into yeah. those spaces. That's mm -hmm. where you wanna receive your discussion about what's best for you. Yes, definitely. And I love that we were talking about love consciousness in our yes. kind of pre-interview. Do you wanna talk about that so that people know what love consciousness is? What the heck is that? that? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about here? Um, so <laughs> love consciousness is bringing consciousness, being conscious, thinking. So again, there's the thinking, but there's also that heart-centered, my own power, my own heart telling me what I want and being aware of that, being tuned into that. And then from that space, we have awareness. That awareness gives us more choices than when we're than we're doing when we're doing without that. And so love consciousness is tapping into that and working from that space. And that's not just um, for love partnerships. That's for anything that you want to do. That's how do I want to be? Yeah. What, how do I want to tune in? How do I want to be? There are actually love consciousness practices that you can do to um, tune into that more and, and be, have that be more of a natural process for you so that you um, are working from that space of choice on the regular. So what's like a favorite practice or a quick one that you would do or suggest for someone who's starting off and who wants to get more into that loving space? 
So you demonstrated a perfect one, which is tuning into your heart space. Mm -hmm. One of the first things to do, if this is if this is all like new to you and you're like, I don't know, love consciousness, what are we talking <laughs> about? Um, the tuning into your heart space. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do like to put one hand on my heart and one on my solar plexus mm -hmm. and closing your eyes and taking deep breaths and moving really into that space, that sacred heart space that is your very own. Yes. tuning into that mm -hmm. just as much as you can. It's, it's a meditative practice. It's also a mindfulness type of meditation practice. Mm -hmm. But what happens is you'll get in there and it might be a little uncomfortable at first because either because it's new and different or because you're afraid of what you might find there. Right. But breathe into it and trust that you're safe. This is your body. This is your heart. This is your soul. Yes. You can trust that. Mm -hmm. And that's where to start. I love that. And Diana is loving it too. She sent us a heart. Oh, thank you, Diana. And then Jennifer, I split with my husband and we're talking and hanging out after three months. I'm finding it hard because I don't have a strong hell yes, but I feel like that's because we have some healing to do. How can you tell if you're on the right track? That's a great question. Uh, thanks for asking it. So you're not having a strong hell yes. That's that's a, a pretty good indication that you still want to tread with caution. You want to go forward, continue to check in. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I, I would like to suggest that it's not that your husband and you are going to not share a relationship of some sort. I want to suggest that your relationship is changing. Mm. Um, it's already changed. You, you've indicated that. Mm -hmm. But what it's going to ultimately be, there is really no destination like anything. You're going to continue to relate to each other in some fashion, hopefully in a very positive, healing, healthy way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's just a walk together. You're walking together in this relationship. You're mm -hmm. seeing what each of you needs, um, how each of you can or cannot show up for each other. What what can you do? What do you want to create together? What do you want to create? What does he want to create? And indeed, what kind of healing do you feel like you might want to attend to right now? Mm -hmm. And if he needs healing, that's something for him to recognize in himself. It's it's really, um, I find counterproductive for me, for example, to tell my husband, hey, this is what <laughs> you need right now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can stay in the space of I, this is mine. This is my experience. This is what I need. This is what I'm experiencing. Here's how I feel. That's going to um, allow him to feel safe enough to share as well. And he might, I don't know what his personality is like. Different people have different uh, levels of sharing, interest in sharing. Um, but ultimately, if you are creating a safe space by showing up in your own vulnerability and your own truth, mm -hmm. he is more likely to also join you in that space. And if he doesn't, you all, that's another indication of the direction and the flavor of, of how this relationship will go forward. Mm -hmm. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, very, very insightful. And Bridget, hi, lovely to join you as always. Thanks for joining us, Bridget. Hi, Bridget. And how do you help people get their soulmate relationships? That's, and what's your yeah. soulmate? Because everyone has oh, like yeah. their own little tweaks and flavors of it too. <laughs> right. Well, there's all kinds of soulmate relationships that we can have. Mm -hmm. We can have a soulmate with um, our favorite pet. Yeah. We, you know, that kind of relationship with that pet. We can have a soulmate relationship with our, with a favorite tree. We can have a soulmate relationship with our favorite type of tea. Mm -hmm. We can have a soulmate relationship with our mom, with a sibling, with a boss, with a husband, a wife, mm -hmm. uh, or other partner. Um, mm -hmm. So my point is, there are many different relationships that can be soulmate relationships. One category of soulmate relationship that I tend to work with a lot, uh, with spiritually inclined business women in particular, is the power couple soulmate relationship. Awesome. So the way that I work with um, usually women, although I do work with men as well, is we start out really defining. So this is after the readiness, right? Are we ready for a relationship? Are we whole? Are we happy? Do we feel good? Yes. Now, what do I want to create in terms of relationship? Mm -hmm. 
What are my strengths that I already have that I can then apply to the creation of this beautiful relationship that I want to co-create? And who do I want to create it with? This is a good time to pull out your checklist and just look at it and check, you know, like what's missing. This would be my ideal partner. Um, and there are, there are very specific um, aspects, I'm going to say, to look at in terms of what what I want to create, what I want to experience. And you need to come again from your I space. This is what I want, what I want to create, what I want to experience. You don't have to compromise anything. And in fact, if you're a busy woman of any kind, business woman or otherwise, um, you're already creating this beautiful life. There's a lot of things that are taking your time and attention and energy, one of which should be caring for yourself. I want to add that. Yes. Okay, there's a should. I did it. But um, I'd we like highly to highly recommend my... when you love yourself, <laughs> everything else goes better. <laughs> everything else kind of flows from there. Um, so then then we look at what do what do I want to create and who do I want to create it with? And so I have a process that's proven that we go through um, and then we create a strategy that's unique to you in terms of what you want to create, what relationship you want to create. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, we go out into the world and apply that strategy mm -hmm. and attract that person yes. and start to create that relationship with them. And again, this, as you mentioned, this relationship is a third entity, mm -hmm. right? There's me and the other person and then the us. Mm -hmm. So what kind of us are we building? What, what, what are the flavors of us? What do I want to experience in us? Yeah. What do I want to contribute in us? What am I available for in us? Mm -hmm. What do I need to get out of us? Yeah. Also, <laughs> all of those mm -hmm. things. So, okay. so again, it's um, a lot of defining. There's a lot of feeling into. There's a lot of, there, and before that, there's the healing and getting clear. And um, really, that's the love upgrade part. Yes. And then we move into the soulmate strategy. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Once we and have love, that unique strategy, we we'll go out and apply it. Yes. I love how you have that in that exact framework. And it is still important. Like your checklists aren't like not important guys, mm -hmm. but like years and years ago when I got into the whole Tony Robbins world and he's like, I didn't just create an ideal partner for me and write down all the things that she would need to be. He also created that ideal man that he would have to be to attract her. So That's it's right. so important to get both sides of that to not just be like, yeah, I'm going to sit on the couch all day long and not read a book. And I want this like super personal development guy who has abs and all these things. It's like, he's not going to look for an ideal partner who might be your current level. So it's like, what do you need to do to love yourself, to show up, to be that bigger, brighter version of yourself that you're truly meant to be in this world that will attract him in. And instead of focusing on, a bunch of dating sites and all that stuff like focus your time and energy on what you can control which is yourself and your mentality and your mindset and your energy and what you're doing to take care of yourself and your personal care habits and all those things so that you can be that ideal partner and it was very interesting to me because when I had done all those things and I was very good in my life and a friend was just like you should maybe go on tinder I'm like okay like I wasn't in that desperate energy of like oh my god I need a guy mm. And I had made the list and I had become the woman of who would be attracted to that man and who that man would be attracted to. And I went on Tinder on a Wednesday and met him on a Saturday, like years ago. And we had like an almost two year relationship. So people are like, does that really happen? It's like, yes, you have to get your energy right first. You get really, really clear and then being clear on what that relationship looks like together as well. Yes. So I love that you have that whole process. Yeah. And Jennifer said, thank you. It was so awesome. It was very Good. helpful for Excellent. her. Great, Jennifer. Thank you for Beautiful. your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if anyone else who's on with us live has a question, I definitely encourage you guys to do that. Yes. Right now we're going to get into that experience. So I encourage you guys to let go of whatever else you're doing. I know sometimes I'm guilty of listening to all this awesome stuff in my ear while I'm doing something else. But just give yourselves a couple minutes of your day to just focus on this experience that can enhance your life by getting more clarity on your identity and around some of the expectations that you might have or society might have and getting a little bit more clear for yourself so you can move forward. Yeah, so we're gonna do an exercise exactly for that clarity around how you identify yourself and the expectations around you, who you should be, you know, who other people have told you you are or sh sh who you should be. Um, 
So if you have it, bring out a piece of paper and a pencil or your, your phone, wherever you can take a note, or maybe you're on your computer, you can just pull up a document really quick. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to ask you a series of five questions. We're going to just take a moment in between each question. And the first thing that comes to you as an answer, I want you to go ahead and write it down. Mm -hmm. For each question, we're going to start off, like we mentioned before, with your hand on your heart and your hand on your, um, right here. I'm going to stand up so you can see, like this. And to, I want you to close your eyes now with your hand on your body, your hands on your body and take a deep breath. We're gonna do three deep breaths. So really deep, all the way down into your hips and then let it out slowly. And again, all the way down into your hips. And as you're doing this, you're tuning in to that space inside of you. And with each breath, you're going deeper and deeper inside of yourself. One more. Okay. With your eyes still closed, the first question is, what are your parents' thoughts or ideas about you and who you are? Let that answer pop in. What are your parents' thoughts or ideas about you and who you are? Go ahead and take a quick note about that when it comes to you. Okay, so we're going to put our hands back on our body and tune in again with a deep breath all the way down into your hips. And as you're taking your breath, you're moving deep inside your body into your sacred heart space. Now the next question, generally speaking, what are society's thoughts and ideas about you and who you are? So let that pop in for you. Generally speaking, what are society's thoughts and ideas about you and who you are? And when that pops up for you, go ahead and take a quick note. Okay, you're getting the hang of this, right? So hands back on your heart and your solar plexus. Deep breath in all the way down into your hips, tuning into your sacred heart space. What are your own thoughts and ideas about yourself and who you are? What are your own thoughts about and ideas about yourself and who you are? Okay. Hands back in your sacred heart space, taking your deep breath into your hips, tuning in. We're going to shift gears a little bit this time. What do you currently base your self-worth and value on? What do you currently base your self-worth and value on?
Okay, and here's our final question. Hand on heart, hand on solar plexus, deep breath in all the way down to your hips. Tuning into your sacred heart space and asking, what external measures do you use to measure your value? What external measures do you use to measure your value? Okay, so uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to say we're done. Uh, if you'd like to, you can always come back and also people on the replay, you know, pause the video, take your time, do what you need to with these questions. Let the, let the deep answers come to you. Let your heart space speak to you. Mm -hmm. And these answers are just for you. So it's totally safe. No one else is gonna know about them unless you decide to share them. Um, but what you can see, what we've done here is we've excavated some of that information that tells you who you should be. Mm -hmm. um, the fifth question about external measures, I wanna go back to a comment we made earlier today about external validation versus internal validation. A lot of the times we get hung up on external me measures that were handed down to us at the time, probably with good intentions. Mm -hmm. But are those really your values? Is that really how you want to value yourself? What are your values? What's important to you? Yeah. To you, not um, what you inherited as a set of values. Mm -hmm. Some of those values may in fact be true values for you, mm -hmm. but it's worthwhile checking them out and just saying, was that inherited or is that really mine? Mm -hmm. So with each of these questions, you can kind of see where you might have a contrast between or a conflict between information you've gotten about who you should be and your true you. Yeah. And we really want to encourage you, we, me and Laura, want to encourage you to bring out the real you. Yeah. Live from the real you. Allow her to come forward. She is magnificent. She yeah. is beautiful. She shines so bright. Let her light shine. That's what we need right now. Yes. That's what we need all the time, not just right now. <laughs> yeah. It's what you need. It's what your partner needs. It's what your family yes. needs. Even if they don't think that they need it right now, it's what the world needs. Like the world it, needs. It's not selfish to take time to do this. It's so important to be this loving being and to have the time and space to get to know her and to develop into like the beautiful version of yourself that you already are. Yeah, exactly. Express that. And yes. I promise you that the influence that you're going to have by allowing yourself this truth mm -hmm. is, is only for the good of everybody else. Yes. Mm -hmm. That allows them to also do the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And it's interesting because I've been having conversations with certain women lately about them discovering their truth because I've been just like throwing my truth everywhere and being like this is me <laughs> this is like ever since I got back from date with SD I'm like this is me and my truth I don't care if people think it's weird or whatever like my people will come to me everyone else can find their own ideal person to come to and in that I've been having conversations with them and then some of them are like I'm in a relationship right now where it's not working and my truth is that I need to leave but I don't want to hurt him and it's like in the short term, it might feel like you're hurting him, but in the long term, you're doing him a favor because I went mm -hmm. through that in my own life where I'm like, I love you and we love each other and we could have a pretty good life together, but we're not each other's person. Like we are very intuitive when we knew that like we weren't each other's person long term, like ideal life partner. And it was hard and we had all those societal things and we knew each other's families and we had planned things like, but it wasn't our truth. So even in the short term where it felt bad and all the like judgments and 
things that we tend to have around breaking up and ending a relationship and speaking our truth and all that, even though it doesn't make sense or seems crazy to other people, your truth is your truth. And honoring that means you'll have an incredible long-term life. And so will he, because you don't want to be with someone that you're not happy with and that you don't feel fulfilled by. And if your truth is saying that you need to grow and find your ideal person, then it's safe to do that too. That there's never a bad in truth. Like our egos will have certain Mm -hmm. judgments, but following your truth will always lead everyone to a happier life. Absolutely. And I love this experience. It was very interesting to see what my family and what society (laughs) believes around me right now. I'm like, oh, I'm going to work on some of those things because I don't want to have that showing up in my life. And then I was like super excited about like me and where I'm at and being super in alignment with things since I did date with Destiny. And I'm like super in alignment with what I'm here to do in this world and shining my light and love and all the things in the world. So I love that. And then it was very interesting that external measures as well, because it's like, oh, I still do have things that aren't the healthiest there that I would want to tweak. So just having this insight will bring you guys like very valuable awareness to be like, okay, how am I going to move forward from this? Or like, Ooh, I don't really like how that feels. Let's do some healing work on it or do a meditation on it or ask your higher power, God, creator, source, energy, the universe, whatever you believe in, how you can clear this or shift it or move it or transmute it. However you want to like work with that energy so that it's not holding you back. So you can have the most loving relationship, not only with yourself, but also with your soulmate partner. That's right. That's right. So, share with everyone how they can connect with you after the show and all the awesomeness that you have going on in your world. Yes, I will definitely put links um, in the comments so that people can come back and refer to them. So you don't have to like, oh my God, what'd she say? Um, (laughs) But the main site is Mm -hmm. radiantheartlove.com, and there's a tab on there that says "Start Here." So beautiful. I want to go there first. Again, I'm going to mention the love frequency reading. I mentioned that at the beginning. Um, I'm also offering because of Valentine's Day, I'm doing a 33% off special. Um, So you check that out. Now's a good time to do that. And then um, I also offer just a complimentary consult. It's a love and relationship solution call. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll put a link for that also in the in the comments and we can we can talk you can bring whatever your biggest challenge is um, we can find a solution and I can read your energy while we're on the call it's really fun awesome. that's so beautiful thank you so much and I love that it's like on sale guys that's a beautiful time if you're single and you're like what am I going to do for Valentine's Day maybe you should give yourself a little bit of a gift <laughs> I like to gift myself stuff when I'm single I'm like I love me <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and even here's the thing. It's for everybody. It's not even yeah. just if you're single. I mean, true. Very it's a true. great thing for you. It's a great gift for somebody Check else. In. It's yeah. Let's get, let's figure out your love vibe. Let's look at your, your love energy journey. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun and it's very clarifying. And, um, a lot of people there's, if you go to the page for it, you'll see how awesome people have found it to be. <laughs> Ooh, very Yay. Cool. Yay. Can you tell I really enjoy it? <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna Come do it, it with me. You start now. <laughs> okay, cool. Go right after the show to the start now tab, guys, and find out all the awesomeness that Julie has. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. That beautiful experience, yeah. all of your knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for letting me be here with you. This is wonderful. And I'm so happy to just spend time with you. Thanks, Laura. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And thank you guys all for joining us live. If you have a friend or loved one or family member who needs this message, I encourage you to share it with them. You can also, if you don't want to like publicly share it on people's walls or on your wall, you you can take your link and send it to people in private messages. You don't have to like tag them in public. If you're like, I don't really want to tell them like you need a love, love upgrade. But if you feel like you have someone in your life who would benefit from this message, I encourage you to share that with them so you can be a light in their world as well. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I encourage you to join me again on Monday at 1 Atlantic, 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific for the Love and Light Show. And if that broke into blissful free one-hour masterclass is calling your name, be sure to sign up for that as well. And I'll put the links in the comments. So I'm hoping you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I'm sending you guys so much love and light. Bye.